Let's get right into it. Number 10. The Human Bullet. Picture this. A doctor straps himself to a rocket sled, hits 632 miles per hour, faster than a speeding bullet, then slams to a complete stop in 1.4 seconds. His eyeballs fill with blood. His bones crack. And then, he does it again, 29 times. Meet John Paul Stapp, the man who turned himself into a human crash test dummy to save your life. In the 1940s, fighter pilots were dying left and right. Nobody knew if the human body could survive ejecting from a jet. So Stapp built the Sonic Wind No. 1, basically a rocket on rails, and decided to find out the hard way. During his most insane run, Stapp went from 0 to 632 miles per hour in 5 seconds. That's like being shot out of a cannon. Then came the stop. The force hit him with 46.2 Gs. Imagine two cars suddenly landing on your chest. Blood vessels in his eyes exploded. His vision went dark. Scientists said it was impossible to survive. Stapp survived anyway. He broke ribs, fractured his wrist, twice. But every time he healed, he'd climb back on that death sled. Why? Because every broken bone taught him something new about keeping people alive. Those seat belts in your car? They exist because Stapp proved humans could survive incredible crashes if properly restrained. Before him, car companies thought seat belts would trap people. Stapp's shattered bones proved them wrong. Number 9. The Heart Invader. In 1929, touching the heart meant instant death. At least that's what every doctor believed. Werner Forsman thought they were wrong. His plan to prove it? Thread a tube through his own arm directly into his beating heart. When his boss said absolutely not, Forsman got creative. He sweet-talked a nurse, pretending he'd perform the procedure on her. Once she gathered the supplies, plot twist, he convinced her to strap him to the table instead. Using only a mirror, Forsman pushed a thin tube into a vein in his elbow. He could feel it snaking through his body, inch by inch, heading for his heart. Most people would panic. Forsman stayed calm, guiding the tube deeper. Then, like it was no big deal, he walked to the x-ray department just strolled down the hall with a tube hanging out of his arm, like a bizarre fashion statement. The x-ray confirmed it. The tube sat perfectly in his heart's right chamber. His heart kept beating. He'd just revolutionized medicine. His reward? He got fired. His colleagues called him reckless, dangerous, insane. Twenty-seven years later, those same procedures were saving millions of lives. Forsman won the Nobel Prize. Today, Cardiac catheterization is as routine as taking someone's temperature, all because one doctor was brave enough, or crazy enough, to stick a tube in his own heart. Number 8. The Mosquito Martyr In 1900, yellow fever was turning people into walking nightmares. Your skin turned yellow. You vomited black blood. Your organs melted from the inside. Most victims died horribly. Nobody knew how it spread. Then a Cuban doctor suggested mosquitoes. Everyone thought he was nuts. Enter Jesse Lazier, part of the Yellow Fever Board in Cuba. To test the mosquito theory, he did something unthinkable. He let infected mosquitoes feast on his blood. While working in a fever ward, a mosquito landed on Lazier. He could have swatted it. Instead, he watched it feed, noting it in his logbook like he was recording the weather. Days later, the fever hit. His skin yellowed. Blood leaked from places blood shouldn't leak. His colleagues could only watch as the disease consumed him. Lazier died just over a week later, but his death wasn't in vain. His colleagues continued the work, sitting in rooms full of infected mosquitoes, offering their arms like a buffet. Some survived, some didn't, but they proved mosquitoes were the killers. This discovery changed everything. Instead of burning clothes or purifying air, they could target mosquitoes. One man's sacrifice saved millions from the same horrible fate. Number 7. The Cocaine Spine Party Two doctors in 1898 decided to test spinal anesthesia by injecting cocaine directly into each other's spines. Then things got weird. August Beer and his assistant started with the assistant as guinea pig, but after multiple failed attempts, spinal fluid was leaking everywhere. Time to switch. The assistant nailed it on his first try, shooting cocaine straight into Beer's spine. Once it kicked in, they started their tests. They hammered Beer's shins with steel mallets, stabbed his thighs with needles yanked out body hair, even squeezed sensitive areas with crushing force. Beer felt nothing, absolutely nothing below the waist. To celebrate their success, they threw a party, drank heavily, smoked cigars. The next morning brought karma, splitting headaches from the combination of spinal taps and alcohol. But their drunken experiment revolutionized surgery. Today, millions of operations use spinal anesthesia. 
Every painless C-section, every comfortable hip replacement exists because two doctors got high on cocaine and hit each other with hammers. Number 6. The Poison Chamber Pioneer Coal miners were dropping dead from invisible killers. J.S. Haldane's solution? Build a homemade gas chamber and poison himself repeatedly. Inside his sealed chamber, assistants pumped in toxic gases while Haldane took notes on how it felt to die. Carbon monoxide made him pass out cold. They'd drag him out, wait for him to recover, then he'd go back for more. He discovered exactly how much poison it takes to knock someone unconscious, how long before permanent damage, what warning signs to watch for. Those canaries miners carried underground? Haldane's idea. He figured out small animals show poisoning symptoms first, natural alarm systems with feathers, but gases weren't enough. Haldane wanted to understand decompression sickness, so he locked himself in pressure chambers and gave himself the bends multiple times, joints screaming, blood bubbling. He kept taking notes. His self-torture created the first decompression tables for divers, revolutionized mine safety, saved countless lives, all because one scientist thought the best way to understand death was to die a little bit himself. Number 5. The Cholera Chugger In 1892, Max von Pettenkofer walked into his lab and chugged a glass full of cholera bacteria. Not a sip. The whole glass. Cholera was a mass killer. Robert Koch had just discovered the bacteria causing it. Case closed, right? Not for Max. He believed bacteria alone wasn't enough. You needed bad conditions, too. To prove it, Max prepared his death cocktail. Fresh cholera culture. Some bicarbonate to neutralize stomach acid. Down the hatch. Everyone expected him to die horribly. Cholera turns you into a human fountain, draining fluids until you're a living mummy. Instead, Max got mild stomach upset. That's it. Turns out, Max was one of those rare people who carry cholera without getting sick. Lucky him. But his core idea wasn't wrong. Modern science confirms cholera needs more than just bacteria to cause outbreaks. It needs poor sanitation, contaminated water, crowded conditions. Max's insane experiment led to better sewage systems, cleaner water supplies, improved public health. Sometimes being half right and completely crazy changes the world. Number 4. The Blood Wart Hero, Peru, 1885. Two mysterious diseases were destroying lives. Arroya fever killed you slowly. Veruga peruana covered you in bleeding warts. Were they connected? Medical student Daniel Carrion had a theory. Same disease, different stages. To prove it, he took blood from a patient's disgusting wart and injected it straight into his own veins. For three weeks, nothing. Then day 21 hit like a freight train. Fever spiked. Joints screamed. Red blood cells vanished. Even as his body failed, Carrion kept writing. Every symptom, every change. His handwriting got shakier, but he wouldn't stop. His final entry... Up to now, I had been the doctor and the subject, but from now on, I will be just the subject. He died proving the diseases were one. Peru named it Carrion's Disease, made October 5th, the day he died, their day of medicine. One student's sacrifice solved a medical mystery that had killed thousands. Number 3. The Nerve Slicer Henry had convinced a surgeon friend to slice open his arm and cut a major nerve, while fully awake, then spent four years, four years, documenting every sensation as it grew back. That's longer than high school, devoted to poking his own arm and scribbling notes. His discovery? We have two separate feeling systems. One handles survival basics. Extreme heat. Sharp pain. The don't die signals. The other manages fine details. Telling two pinpricks apart. Feeling textures. When nerves regenerate, survival comes first. Your body rebuilds the danger system before the details system. Makes sense. Staying alive beats feeling silk. Today, doctors predict nerve healing patterns because one scientist turned his arm into a four-year science experiment. When you stub your toe and feel sharp pain then dull throbbing, you're experiencing head's discovery in real time. Number 2. The Family Vaccine 1952. Polio paralyzed children within hours. Turned summer into every parent's nightmare. Kids who swam in the morning could be in iron lungs by nightfall. Machines breathing for them. Many never walked again. Many never breathed again. Jonas Salk thought he had a vaccine. To prove it was safe, he didn't start with strangers. He started with his own family. Picture this. A father lines up his wife and three young sons, rolls up their sleeves, injects them with an experimental vaccine that might save them, or might give them the very disease terrorizing the world. That's not just confidence. 
That's a father betting his children's lives on his work. The vaccine worked. By 1955, millions of kids were getting shots. Polio cases plummeted from 58,000 to 5,000 in two years. By 1979, polio was gone from America. When asked who owned the patent, Salk said, The people. There is no patent. Could you patent the sun? He gave away what would have made him a billionaire, because some things matter more than money. Number 1. The Bacteria Cocktail Imagine your doctor telling you to drink a glass of dangerous bacteria. Now imagine that doctor drinking it himself first. That's exactly what Barry Marshall did in 1982. Every doctor knew stomach ulcers came from stress and spicy food. Their treatment? Relax more. Eat bland food. About as useful as telling someone with a broken leg to think happy thoughts. Marshall had a different idea. Bacteria caused ulcers. When he shared this theory, the medical world laughed in his face. Bacteria can't survive stomach acid, they said. You're crazy. So Marshall got crazy. One morning, he mixed a petri dish full of H. pylori bacteria with beef broth. It looked like dirty dishwater. Smelled worse. He drank every drop. Within days, his stomach turned into a war zone. Constant nausea. Breath that could peel paint. He felt like he'd swallowed molten lead. But here's the beautiful part. He was right. Tests proved his stomach was crawling with bacteria. He'd given himself gastritis, the gateway to ulcers. Then he took antibiotics and cured himself, proving ulcers weren't about stress. They were an infection. Today, millions of people pop a few pills instead of suffering for years. Marshall won a Nobel Prize for drinking that bacterial smoothie. Sometimes being right means being willing to poison yourself to prove it. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.